I truly cannot get over get, get over it. It is who no, is sitting there typing no that out? Uh, there's no parallel. It's not like nothing else I've ever seen on social media, and I think I've seen most of social media at this point. Welcome to Keep It, Cricket Media show about pop culture and politics, and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III. I'm a television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel. I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. And I'm Aida Osman. I'm a TV writer and alleged comedian. Let's get into it. My keep it is to Israel's social media manager. Oh my God. I know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. I, I, first of all, why does Israel have a social media manager? No guess. Uh, why, why is the country tweeting? But this week, they tweeted out a bunch of rocket emojis, which were supposed to represent, you know, all of the rockets shot by Hamas at Israel. You know, um, that were meant to kill. Baby, there has to be a different way to approach that than, like, putting out a series of rocket emojis. It looked deranged. It was un- It looked deranged. It was unthinkable. Spe- unthinkable. Uh, yeah. Unthinkable. And also, like, there were there were other tweets that, that have sounded like a um, sad influencer. You know, I think Naomi Fry um, referred to like their tweets as like sad influencer apology tweets because it was something being like, you know, we're exhausted this week. You know, we've been going through it. I'm like, baby, the comments are not on your side here. Yeah, no, it's kidding. deranged. It's deranged, and I think it, it it's it's lending itself to the entire discussion that so many people have been having this week. Obviously, like, how do you show support for Palestine uh, without saying that you know you hate Jewish people? And some people don't understand how to do that because some people don't read um, or um, possess you know um, cognitive thinking skills. But let me tell you that ethnic cleansing genocide killing people uh women and children we can always come on the side of not supporting that so we can say that palestinian lives matter you know we can say that we support them not living under an oppressive rule uh and it's wild that it's like taken forever for people to be able to like influences to be able to admit this right you know because like even saying it a few years ago would have been like unthinkable uh and it's also because the fucking right wing side of this country has decided to um, make Israel their like um, mascot. <laughs> you know, they're right, always right. defending Israel, which didn't we just go through a whole election cycle where um, they were constantly saying anti Semitic things? So it's like, if we don't believe you, <laughs> you know? I want to uh, reiterate, by the way, that you are talking about a Twitter account that is called at Israel. As in, yes. is there an account called at United States? Because guess what? I'm not following it. And it's tweeting like Trump. I mean, I would assume it would be, but I just didn't. I don't, I don't understand. What country has a social media manager? It's so shocking. I don't understand what's happening. And by the way, it's not that they tweeted rockets one time. It's that they did it five times. Like they were like making a huge spectacle of it. Um, yeah. Not that this isn't already something we're already all talking about, but they were. I guess trying to reorganize the narrative in some cutesy, emojified way, and I, it really makes my brain split. Um, the whole thing is trying to refocus a narrative and to make it be, hey, let's focus on you know like the attacks happening on people in Israel and not on this oppressive rule and years, years of abuse towards Palestinian people, you know, and um. Of course, we should live in a world where, um, you know, Israelis and Palestinians are not under attack either. But, you know, that's not going to happen when social media lets people change narratives like this. um, And also, like, our government continues to give billions of dollars in aid to Israel. Like, that shit is whack in general. And now you have at Israel tweeting when, like, how about you focus on inviting people to birthright trips and gays to circuit parties? Yeah, um, that's what you should be doing. Biden having this milk toast response to the whole thing, or attempting to have a milk toast response, well, um, in fact, just echoing the same sentiments of the past three presidents is uh, also very disappointing. Yeah, 
It's it, it really is. And I would say that, you know, I feel like social media is the one thing sort of like helping raise any sort of awareness about this and people actually talking about what's happening in Palestine is something that wasn't happening years ago. So um, keep tweeting about it. Keep posting about it. Uh, keep calling out deranged tweets from at Israel. I truly cannot get over get, get over it. It is who no, is sitting there typing no that out? Uh, there's no parallel. It's not like nothing else I've ever seen on social media, and I think I've seen most of social media at this point. So, <laughs> last Wednesday, talk show host and lesbian Rita Repulsa reincarnation Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> announced the end of her show after 19 seasons on air. Rather than cite the rampant sexual and emotional abuse that was fostered on her set, she claimed the departure was due to boredom and a desire to find a new challenge. Which I'm not going to say that's untrue. Like people clinging to that quote, it's like, what's she supposed to be, thrilled by the gig? I don't know. She's interviewed Jesse Tyler Ferguson 71 times. The 72nd isn't going to be the banger. <laughs> I find it incredibly challenging to get white woman to dance on beat. And she has never <laughs> succeeded. So I don't think that she has met that challenge. I think she's quitting early because she can't handle it. Uh, I don't know how to feel about Ellen. I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. It's difficult watching her because I'm so nostalgically. I've imprinted once again on her. But um, it, she's gone through so many different phases. We got Ernest mm -hmm. Lesbian, who worked so hard to get our own show. We got a uh, Goofy Dancer. Then we got Annoying Dancer. And then we got Workplace Monster. And now, now I'm just not, I'm not sure how to feel. Yeah. You know, I think I may have taken a pivot back to Stan because... I don't know. The, the, the woman, look, the, I will say the woman always looked tired in the past few years. And like, if this means that Ellen can take a nap and get a refresh, then I am all for it. I mean, during the quarantine, I thought that like she would have come out into this season, right? Looking at least like refreshed. She got her big ass mansion, estate. Mm. You know, I'm like, girl, you constantly look like you were being held hostage on your own show. So. Well well, it's interesting Quit. to me because my my whole take on the what has come out about the Ellen show is that the news of it, which is to say like, all right, there are men who behave terribly who were then fired, is not the same thing as Ellen was mean. So I feel like mm. people took a certain satisfaction out of the news that came out of the toxicity of her work environment that doesn't actually match the rumors everybody was so excited to confirm. So in mm -hmm. a way, I'm like, I feel like people in general just want to take Ellen down, which uh, on which I am on her side. But then... Mm. So you I, think there's a concerted effort. But but then again... Because she did she, come out with conspiracy theories saying that like, yeah. it, 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 does, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like this. It seems coordinated. Like no. she's acting like there's Ellen Anon. And oh, I'm then trying to I take saw her down. Savannah Guthrie <laughs> interviewed her. And I thought that turned me back into dubiousness about Ellen because she said things like, I guess I shouldn't have made my brand be nice to people because then like it's all going to come back to me. It's like, well... Uh, on the one hand, I do think there's a certain sector of people who resent that a woman could be nice-seeming and then any news to the contrary feels like a betrayal to them because, you know, everybody thinks women should be their mom or their girlfriend, like comforting to them at all times and everything else is a betrayal. So, again, I'm on Ellen's side there. But I felt like her answers to her questions were surprisingly narcissistic in that she kept pointing to her own brand as opposed to her own actions. And I thought that was surprising. She sounded like an influencer apologizing. Yes. On Instagram. Exactly. It's like focusing on the brand and not what she's done. Maybe the wildest part about that interview was well, when she went into how she said her therapist said that it is very rare for an individual to suffer two public humiliations in their lifetime. She's talking about, you know, obviously when she came out and was shunned. And now she's talking about this. Uh, and I was like, that seems a, a bit much, girl. Because here's the thing. People were taking pleasure in, obviously, a takedown of Ellen because they perceive her to be mean. Yes, you know. But also, the behavior that happened on your show was wild. And the fact that you just sort of, like, ignored it for years and let it happen is not a good look. 
And she's never really truly apologized for that, right? You know, Mm -hmm. it's always been like, I guess I was too nice. I was the nice lady. I let this stuff happen. And I thought, like, all was good in the kingdom. It's like, girl, what, what, what was happening at work? Ellen, I'm sure Ellen is exhausted speaking on this issue multiple times. So sometimes I like excuse her for not being emphatic in her apologies. But Lewis, you're totally right. She sounded narcissistic. She was giving me like the Trumpian way of deflecting blame when you're just like this nebulous, like pie in the sky person is no longer wanted me to be on air. And she just kept saying that like she's like it felt orchestrated. It felt like it was an attack on me and then an attack on the show. And I just know somebody didn't want me to be on the show. But that ignores all of the claims of people who were on your staff that called you toxic and phony and hypocritical and like a liar and rude. And the, the examples of not necessarily microaggressions that happened from Ellen, but horrible things that were happening on her show. It's, it's hard cause I have empathy and I understand that to be Ellen is already a difficult job. I would be a bitch probably too, but also the way you're deflecting is not, it's, it feels like a telltale sign of somebody who don't want to really claim what happened. Well, it reminds me of the Kevin Hart interview, which I will always, you know, feel like is the nail in her coffin, you know, because Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart said some homophobic shit and then didn't want to apologize for it. And then she brought him on her show to basically say that he was uh, it was an orchestrated attack against him. The yeah. same thing that she's saying now, right? And then, you know, um, saying, well, he's my friend. I know he doesn't hate gay people. And I'm like, girl, you're completely missing the point here and retreating into uh, people shouldn't attack my rich friends. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like the, for me it was the photos with George Bush <laughs> when we were just reminded again mm. that Ellen is just so ridiculously rich. I think made $84 million last year alone. Pulls in like $25 million from her YouTube, $50 million from her show. Makes so much money that I... I don't even listen to people who make over six figures, okay? So how am I supposed to listen to people who are making millions of dollars? You're so tapped out of reality. I mean, well, in the case of the George W. Bush thing and in the Kevin Hart thing, the whole be kind thing becomes just be instantly forgiving because who cares? You know what I mean? That's Mm -hmm. when you get, like, uh, unchecked from reality. That said, do you remember the part of the Savannah Guthrie interview where Savannah kind of slid in what struck me is an emotional question about why Ellen scares people so much. And she goes, she goes, why do you do that? She goes, no, these were real tears talking about herself on the show. And, and it got me thinking about how I think there's a class of celebrity that is fascinated with Ellen and what they have to do while they're around Ellen. Like, I think people, when they go on that show, have like, like their heart drops a little bit because they know they have to serve her and that's an unusual position to be in. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that they're in, inevitably about to get fucked with. A yeah. grown a grown man jumping out of his seat because a clown just popped out of the the, the chair between them, like the table between them. I think I think there's a, a weird power dynamic. Or she'll make you listen to a new Justin Timberlake song unprompted. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> uh typical Gitmo tactics. Yes, that's right. Um It does make me wonder what era we're going into of celebrity now because you even mentioning justin right there there was Mm -hmm. that there's the era of the celebrity who was extra famous because they were constantly on her show right and so they're sort of in that ellen sphere of people who were unimpeachable and like really nice nice guy persona shit for a minute right and then a lot of that came crumbling like kevin hart uh the justin timberlake stuff where people were finally like um yo are you going to talk about what you did to Brittany and Janet? You know, and of course it was the documentary about the white woman, um, Brittany, um, still my queen. But, you know, it was the documentary <laughs> that finally got him to like have to issue an apology. Right. And so mm-hmm. like in an era where people were like, well, we don't fuck with him. We don't fuck with him. We don't fuck with her. Um, what is rising up? Will it just be new people, new gods? for us to knock down from Mount Olympus eventually. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cancel culture. My God. Joe Rogan, <laughs> we, are, we are in agreement, sweetie. Uh, no. But, you know, there's like Kelly Clarkson, you know, whose show is doing better in the ratings. And she's been nothing but nice since American Idol. She's the unusual blend of somebody who is constantly nice in a way that is kind of demanded of 
that time yeah. slot and personality. And yet, that time slot. feels like she actually is showing her real personality, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, which Black is people like, like real... Kelly Clarkson, which yeah. means, you know, it has to be true. Mm-hmm. I think I think I think we as a people just don't like longevity. Like the same way you sick of seeing mm. that coworker in the office multiple times, no matter how nice they are. It's just like you again, you again, and we ultimately will make up stories or just find faults in them until they they fall, until they fall. And it doesn't help that they all congregate together like an Ellen and a Justin Timberlake and a Kevin Hart all at Crafty that's talking true. about their billions. Yeah. That's true. Lewis will be gone by episode 200. <laughs> <laughs> We've been orchestrating an attack on him, and we're trying to get it figured out. As I'm looking speak. at my balcony right now. A grappling hook could appear at any minute. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to point out the one comment uh, that truly sent me to the moon. Uh, <laughs> I just feel like there's something more I could be doing. I care about the environment. I care about animals. I care about design and furniture. <laughs> Girl. Right after those two other things? Oh my god. Also, you know who has you know who always has a passion for design? Extremely rich women. Barbara yeah. Streisand, you get into any interview with her, she's talking about beige pillows before you know it. <laughs> I'm just excited for the post Ellen which which woman in comedy is going to get a television show and kind of fill this position as our daily beloved um, Tiffany Haddish in 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 talks? But there's multiple options. I feel I don't know. Yeah, if Tiffany I'm ready for Tiffany Haddish after after Bad Trip. That's the best thing she. That's the best thing she's done recently since Girls Trip for me. How about mm-hmm. Kiki Palmer? Kiki Palmer, step on up. I would love Kiki to have the show. She plays too many characters though. Right. Like no, no, no. Nicki Minaj level. Like, like, there's, like, I don't, I don't, I can't keep track uh, of like all the different characters that she has. Like, th- this isn't all that. No, she's like laughing level. It's zany zanes. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I appreciate people with energy. We're we're coming up. We're coming into a tired generation. So I'm gonna just appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, everyone is exhausted. If, if if people have if people have energy and it's not through drugs, right? Come with it. Mm. <laughs> Please. Mm-mm. Come on, Gilda Radner. Yeah. I had to take speed before I do this podcast. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Our comedians are, we are in a sloth-like comedy phase. Even I've noticed amongst my peers, it's all like serious. I have all these moralistic thoughts and I'm going to impose them on you uh, in a menacing way instead of just, mm. you know, give me Jim Carrey face. Girl, be right. ugly. Girl, be no, ugly. I- it's a lot of men, you know? Mm. You know, it's the sort of like Hassan Minaj era, you know, of the like it all everyone coming post that John Stewart like I need to tell jokes but sort of be topical and mm-hmm. you know in that sort of way and you identity know, politics. Nice comedy, <laughs> nice comedy like will burn you out because, you know, John Mulaney losing marriages and you know being with <laughs> Olivia Munn. So <laughs> The nice people can't survive. Right. (laughs) Once you're too nice for too long, it gets exhausting. Do you know what I feel like most comedians are like right now is the the young, the Hannah Einbinder character in Hacks, which is millennial, um, a little burnt out, a little narcissistically uh, oriented when it comes to comedy, but smart. Um, And I feel like we do need a little bit more of a burst of the old school Gene Smart, like... I'm here with the pizzazz and the yeah. hard biting humor. Yeah. Even if I'm it goes beyond, a little broad. As much as we love Rami, as much as we love, you know, the Hannah Gadsby's, I'm beyond the um the I'm thinking a lot. I that's why I do <laughs> enjoy watching Z Way because Z Way is giving us goofy, she's giving us smart, she's giving us mm-hmm. politics, but she's doing it in like a really eccentric way. And I look, we love to see black girls being goofy. We love yeah, I do. Z Way is I not do. making up her personality. It is very authentically that. Mm-hmm. That's uh, you know Yeah. Uh she also gave me a blurb that I said I was going to use on a, my eventual book. She called me the Met Gala of Pop Culture Curation. Oh, wow. Well. And 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 elaborate. Earnestly. Earnestly. Well about how like she was like you you know you curate jokes and things and then oh. other people use them and it was so sweet. She is a supportive queen. Ira Wintour. <laughs> Do you think she meant tacky and forgotten by Wednesday or? 
Absolutely not. Okay, okay. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get in. Oh, I okay? see. Oh, is that Everyone's so? trying to get in, but I am hosted by Timothy Chalamet and Billie Eilish, okay? <laughs> okay? Okay, okay. <laughs>